bring it, but FedEx has got to get out today. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm ready when you are. Okay, so we're ready for the tour as Neil live mentioned to you about me on tape. Okay, and we're going to start the tour in the lobby, and uh, um, uh, Sari's going to pan around the lobby to give you a sense of the gallery. So we're going to start going that way. We'll do a 360 degrees around. Ooh, I think you have to walk. It's going to go through you. There's the hallway. There's the stuff in the hallway. There's stuff over there. Give me a sense of the lobby. So if you, when you come and visit, you'll see what this is. You'll see over here. Of course, this is a uh, this is not the original of this. I think this one, I don't know, is this the one that's sold? And, uh, is the one? No, I don't think that's sold yet. Whoever has that original is going to sell that original. Uh, probably for about a half a million dollars. It gets used for everything, like on toys and whatever. I believe it was purchased on yeah. Heritage Auctions. Chris, was this purchased on Heritage? I don't know. Uh -huh. That is... Like a, a um, recreation. I'm not talking about the recreation. I'm talking about the original. That I don't know. Um, that I'm not aware of. Well, it, I don't know. It was previously owned by one of the members of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Uh, well, my guess is next time it sells, it'll sell for at least a half a million well, or a million dollars. I Scott dealt with them. Huh. Anyway, so it's used for everything. Uh, it's not the greatest drawing in the world because Bat uh, Superman's leg left leg is longer than his right leg so we can put kryptonite never more in between his legs which then when you take it out it kind of it becomes a little more, more obvious that his leg is a little bit long but it's fake perspective and uh, you should know about that if you're art students fake perspective is bs perspective it just is fake so over here i'm going to take a look at this this is uh if this gets sold, it'll be for $10,000. And this is a, a page from Batman Odyssey, and it's a man bat and uh, uh, another man bat who turns out to be Ubu. He took the same chemicals and he turned into this awful creature. And really a lot of fun with this. This is a, a hell of a page. Anyway, looking at the back wall over here, we can see probably one of the best research double page spreads I did over there on the wall. Looking at the top of that train, that's also from Batman Odyssey. That is pages two and three, I believe. Okay, pretty nice. You wanna back up just a little bit so you can get the whole thing. Okay, I don't know if Marilyn is selling that. Does it have a price on it? 25,000. Mm -hmm. I'd buy it. Uh, you probably recognize this thing here. We have this up when you come in so you get to take a look at that. This here, this is uh, the introduction of, uh, of um, uh, John Stewart. John Stewart is the first, uh, as far as I know, the first black uh, comic book superhero that had a college education and a profession and was an ex-Marine, somebody who you can be proud of. Uh, I, I was a little, little sick of gangbangers who get struck by lightning and turn into good guys and suddenly get a superpower. I don't think it takes superpowers to make good people. So I was a little bit uh, annoyed at the process that uh, went into making black superheroes. I think John Stewart is the turn, and I think we have lots better black superheroes nowadays. Anyway, coming down here from the Avengers, this is, uh, I don't know, everybody, fans seem to know the, the number of these books, but this is the Avengers. Um, Roy Thomas called it uh, This Beachhead Earth. I called it Three Cows Shot Me Down, which I believe is a much better title than This Beachhead Earth. Um, Three Cows Shot Me Down does lead one to wonder what the hell the story is about. And we do find that, in fact, three cows do shoot division down. Uh, I have a feeling, and this is the beginning of the Kree Skrull War. I have a feeling that uh, Marvel, in their infinite wisdom, may be doing the Kree Skrull War as their next big project. I hope so, because I can't imagine a better dramatic uh, concept than the Kree Skrull War. These are not originals. The originals are gone, taken, um, never returned to me. Um, 
and in some cases stolen. Uh, I wish they were mine to sell or to offer. I cannot. So I'm afraid, my friends, uh, that you're going to see that you're you're going to see, among other things, uh, things that have uh, uh, were stolen from me. Um, un unfortunately, uh, uh, that's that was the business in those days. People were actually lucky to get some pages back. Anyway, we can move on down. This here behind you is the coming of a Superman. This is a cover. I think it's I don't know which cover it is. The uh, fourth, third or fourth cover. That is, uh, what's that character? What's his name? It's the Jack Kirby character. He's the son of... Uh, of Darkseid, right? Yes. I forget what uh, What's his name? No, we'll think of it as we walk. No, it starts with a K. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Let's move on down. Uh, this is Rock God. This is a Harlan Ellison adaptation. I did tell the story at our last auction of how this whole thing came about. But indeed, this is not uh, the originals. The originals are, well, I'm afraid, sold. Uh, they are um, stolen to begin with and then sold. And that's another uh, very small tragedy in a very fortunate life. You have to understand that my life has been a very fortunate life in that uh, uh, more things have gone good than bad. So I would have to say the few things that got stolen from me, uh, I hope that whoever has them has corns and, um, and, a, <laughs> and bunions on their feet uh, and that they, and that they uh, would uh, avoid stealing things in the future. But it really hasn't hurt me that much, to be perfectly honest. Uh, as you can tell from the studio, uh, we're doing just fine. And when you come here, yeah. now this is not to say that the, if you come here and visit the gallery. Calabac. Calabac, right, that was Calabac. I told you it was a K. If you come and visit the studio, that there's no guarantee that these particular things will be up. There could be different ones. Oh, look at this. Covers, dead man covers. My goodness. Yes, indeed. It doesn't have a price on it. This, I don't know what this is there. So that's a dead man. Oh, this is, uh, I'm not so sure that this is, uh, no, this is a copy. And that doesn't have a price. Another dead man. This is that, another, this is another copy of the dead man. And this is the updated version. This is the, uh, what do you call it, variant, not variant, um, Yes, variant cover. It's a variant cover, but it's a takeoff, an homage to this cover, which is Neil Adams doing an homage to Neil Adams, which I think is incredibly egotistical, and I, and I hate myself for it, but I couldn't resist doing it because if you look at this cover, we have so many people from the old DC comics. There's uh, Jack Kahn, there's Joe Orlando, there's uh, Dick Giordano, there's uh, uh, Marv Wolfman, there's Julie Schwartz. There's Jim Lee, there's, uh, um, uh, this is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Jack Adler, this is Len Wein, this is Carmine Infantino, Joe Schuster, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, Denny O'Neill, Archie Goodwin, uh, so many people who work for D. Oh, uh, Nelson Bridwell, E. Nelson Bridwell, well, you want to come over here and take a look at that? This is E. Nelson Bridwell, only a legend in comics probably the greatest encyclopedic uh, mind in comic books. Oh yeah, this is from Batman uh, Odyssey. This is uh, a kind of a new old uh, Batmobile. This is really Batmobile based on a sports car design. I'm kind of seeing, I, th I have a feeling guys, that uh, the new Batmo Batman movie has a car design not unlike this. I'm a little curious myself to, as to whether or not that, mo that Batmobile will go underwater and fly as this one does. That would be very cool. That would be very, very cool. This is um, Superman versus Muhammad Ali, and this these are original pages. Um, they, the reason they don't have prices on them is because they're not for sale. Marilyn, the wife, has decided at this time that unless she gets the kind of price that she needs to get for this, uh, she's not going to sell them. 
uh, it's part of our the history of comic books and a part of uh, the history of my family. And there's so much about this that's significant that they're not going to go anywhere unless they go with some sort of a prestigious approach. Look at the uh, work on this. I mean, this is <laughs> this is 172 recognizable people here. And those of you who know this book know that. But this is all those people. And this is, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people. It's probably right. the most famous cover in comic books. So where are you and the family? And I and the family are, where am I? Oh, right there. And there's Chris, Dick Giordano, Joel, Jason, Zia. To Orlando. This is Kirk Allen, I believe. The guy who played Jimmy Olsen. This may be Jimmy Olsen rather than the guy who played Jimmy Olsen. Uh, there's everybody and their brother on here. That's, that's amazing. I mean, I'm amazed. I, I mean, actually, it makes me tired just looking at it. Actually, did it. I did one that was based on this for uh, ESPN magazine. This was done in 1978. One for ESPN magazine was done in the year 2000 to celebrate the history of uh, sports in America. We had the 100 greatest athletes of the century, so it was based on this. And fortunately for me, uh, the people who uh, did it paid me a lot more money than they paid for this. A lot more money. Uh, all of these, all of these drawings of uh, Ali were taken exactly from the best photographs available. One of the reasons that we got to color them so well when we did the new updated version is because all those photographs still exist and we use the flesh of Ali to color his face. Anyway, over here, to your, if you'll spin around. Okay, this is in Batman Odyssey where Batman runs into the Joker or not the Joker, in fact, the Joker inhabited by Dead Man who chides Batman for uh, spending so much time tracking down clowns, which seem to be what Batman does an awful lot of. How many clowns are there in Metropolis, I wonder? This is uh, another, another uh, double page spread from uh, Batman Odyssey. Again, <laughs> Batman Odyssey ranges very far and wide. You can see these double page spreads across here. This is not your typical graphic novel. This is going some. We're going under the earth. Uh, we've discovered uh, there's been a whole gang of literature. You guys may not necessarily be aware of it, of uh, Darrow's and Titans and creatures under the earth that have been speculated on, on by people like H.G. Wells, uh, Conan Doyle, other people. Um, lots of people have speculated on this. This is the uh, uh, Batman speculation on H.G. Uh, Wells and uh, uh, caves under the earth and creatures and civilizations that lived under the earth. From For all you scientific goo goos out there, this here, up here, is a gigantic salt dome and around the salt dome is of course the crystal crystallized uh, uh, stalactites and stalagmites and other uh, geographic forms and of course this would have to be near an oil deposit because that's about the level that salt domes are found is by the salt deposits that you find under the earth which is a key to the story it would be quite a key let's turn around and look at this these are not the originals these are um, recreations are recreations these are not cheap recreations because the originals, uh, the original of this one cost almost six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand dollars. I don't think this one has been sold yet, but uh, I don't think we want to sell something for six hundred thousand dollars unless we can keep it. <laughs> I'll be glad to keep it. But uh, I've done a couple of recreations. I try to limit the recreations, uh, but the, even the recreations are not cheap. Over here is the blowing up of a train in Batman Odyssey. This is the pencil because we did a blue line and then went ahead and inked the blue line. So 
So if you're interested in getting that, if you are a collector, uh, you can get the pencil, the full pencil. We also have the ink. This is probably one of the most ambitious pencil jobs I've ever done. I'm sure other people have done better and more, but this for me is a pretty uh, ambitious piece. This here is the hybrids. Now, let me tell you about the hybrids. The hybrids is part of what we published in our short time publishing venture that was very, very good for us. We are going to be publishing again because I've decided that not only am I back doing comic books and do we have a comic book store, we're going to be publishing again. And we're going to be publishing the same characters that we did before. They just got started when we had the crash in comic books and uh, I decided to pull back and to do advertising because it was a very bad time in comic books and I basically told everybody that when comic books get good again, when I feel it's the right time, I will be back publishing comic books. I don't necessarily like super, super, superheroes with powers beyond human capabilities to understand, but I do like superheroes that are a little, a little bit more like real people who have powers that are slightly, well, let's say Megalith. He's uh, 19 years old or 18 years old, and he's just a growing boy, and of course he's tremendously powerful. He started uh, his early life uh, picking up a calf, and then every day he would pick up the calf until it grew it to be a cow. And he's probably the epitome of what we call in uh, bodybuilding, where the mind and body get together and work together and are able to do things that just the mind or just the body can't do by themselves. For those of you who are interested in bodybuilding and good health, you'll understand exactly what I mean. That's what Megalith is all about. This is a recreation over here of the Green Lantern Green Arrow cover. And you can see it's actually quite expensive, even though it's just, it's a recreation, but you know what? The original of this sold for $465,000 at, uh, at Heritage. This page was done for the 9-11 um, book that DC Comics did. Uh, and I, I think one of the things about it that's most interesting is that Superman has become as, almost as much an icon as Uncle Sam in America. And I thought that I would make use of that fact and uh, do the character that I did here and do it the way I did. We were raising money for the 9-11 tragedy. Let's move, oh, you want to move past me? Let's go on, let's go over here. You want to do this Joe Kubert piece? Oh, uh, the Joe Kubert piece, well. If you knew Joe Kubert and you didn't love him, you weren't a human being. Uh, there's very little I can say more than that about it. This is, uh, this is Adam, this is Andy, and these are guys that graduated uh, the Joe Kubert School. Just a small number of them. Um, and of course that's Joe in the foreground. I've known Joe for many years, uh, loved him uh, <clears throat> uh, more than I love most folks. And uh, he was a good man. He did all those things that a comic book artist ought to do or an artist ought to do. He took care of his family, he took care of his health, and he took care of his work. Uh, if, and if you can get a balance that equals uh, family, work, and uh, health, then you're, you've lived a good life. And he did live a great life in, um, admit, in the midst of uh, a terrible time in comic books. It was awful. The page rates were 45 to $50 a page. Joe managed to survive and raised seven kids, I believe. So, uh, and here's two of them boys that I really love too. They're great guys. Anyway, you can't see that. That's a big secret. Okay, this is uh, Batman, again, Batman Odyssey. I don't know why I have so many of these pages. I guess because there were 13 books of 20, 25 pages each. This is Batman, Dead Man, and Ra's al Ghul. kind of like this page because uh, it sort of exemplifies the frustration of dead man who nobody can hear and he just yells at people all the time. It's such a sad thing, this character. Over here are uh, daily strips from Ben Casey. Uh, I did this uh, before most of you were born. I had to uh, get out of school and to become a professional artist 
at age 18, so I would say I started this when I was 20, and these were probably I was 21 when I was when I did these uh, uh, frames, these uh, dailies. Took photographs for almost everything that I did. For those of you who question whether or not it's a good idea to take photographs, you can see by looking at it a good idea to take photographs. You get a lot. Do this you can't easily get that by just drawing or even this. So learn to use your reference. Ah, oh, my goodness. Another, this is a dead man piece. This is, I guess, is from dead men. You know, what can you say? It's a, you know, to me, this is a Jack Kirby, Kirby page. <laughs> it's like Jack Kirby by Neil Adams. I love this. Uh, angry monster, a uh, little uh, superhero who can probably be swallowed in one bite. Uh, it's from the Dead Man series. This over here is from a book that we call Monsters. This is uh, Dracula, Werewolf, and Frankenstein. And uh, these are out of print. When we publish again, we're going to put them in print again. Uh, you can still get a few copies. There's, there are copies around. I believe you can write to uh, Continuity and get them. Uh, and this is an inserted page of uh, the life of an early uh, Frankenstein treated, mistreated badly when he was a youth. Over there are more dailies from Ben Casey. These are some of the posters I've done. This is from Warp. This was a science fiction epic adventure play in three parts produced by Stuart Gordon uh, who did Anim Reanimator and why can't I think of the name of the other movie? Um, and we did it for the Ambassador Theater in in uh, Manhattan, it was a miserable failure <laughs> because uh, the people who were uh, doing the reviewing did not quite understand what we were doing. Then we went back to Chicago and we produced it again in Chicago and it lasted for a year in Chicago. It did very, very well. Big success. So actually it turned out to be great success even though on Broadway it was a failure. I got a Drama Desk Award for it. Unfortunately, for just the first third of it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is uh, for Nighthawk, which is going to be our sort of our Batman in, uh, in continuity comics. Uh, he's got real wings because he's uh, kind of a hybrid. Okay. Ah, this is uh, ne the next book for Batman Odyssey. This is, uh, this is the Dead Man series, which continued after Batman Odyssey. And right now I'm finishing up um, Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul, which is the final series in the, uh, in the series. And these pages are also available. I don't know how many we have from the first issue because they seem to be going. Anyway, a lot of fun, a lot of action, a lot of movement. Oh, this is... I did a series of books for Marvel called First X-Men, which take us back in time to when uh, the Wolverine was the head of the X-Men, uh, before Professor Xavier even showed up. So we have a series uh, here from that. Unfortunately, uh, um, I didn't do all the writing chores, so I think it, uh, it, came, it fell a little short. Uh, not that it wasn't a good job, it just didn't, didn't get to where I wanted it to be. But these pages are also available. And a little cheaper, oddly. $8,000 a page. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, Jason's room. This is some of Jason's stuff. His sculptures, you can go to the internet and you can get his stuff there. Uh, Jason Spida Adams. This is the new baby, my grandson, my new grandson. I don't know what his name is. It's Sebastian. <laughs> uh, this is a print that you can buy through Jason and through Continuity of Tarzan. Uh, we, it was used on the Tarzan books, but we call it Jungle Man, so we don't get into any copyright infringement. Uh, some people like that and have purchased it. This is one of the Megalith covers. This is done by myself and Mark Texera. 
really terrific artist. You pin them down, you tie them to the desk, and you really make them work, and he'll give you something like this. Very, very nice. This, of course, is the first megalith book, first megalith story. That's a cover that I did. This over here is the first page to the first printing of the first megalith book. Right next to it is the cover of Nighthawk. And you will see some interesting things going on with these characters and these, uh, actually those pieces of art. Very interesting things. Oh, this is a Jason statue of uh, Nighthawk. This is Above You, uh, Saint Marie, done by uh, myself and, good guys, I'll think about it. and this by Michael Golden is Bucky O'Hare. Michael Golden is probably one of the true geniuses of uh, comics. These are his pages for Bucky O'Hare. We did a TV show with it, uh, one for one year. We did a lot of licensing. It's uh, moving forward in licensing even now. We have these toys by Boss Fight, which are right down over here. These are the Boss Fight toys, watch your feet. Uh, these are the Boss Fight toys. These, these are very, very flexible and you can do all kinds of stuff with them. These, this is the old uh, Hasbro. This is the new Bucky O'Hare over here, which is very flexible and very bendable and you can do all kinds of things, posable what they call posable. And here's more of the Bucky O'Hare thing. This is a very special thing for continuity. It's, we, this is our first big success. Uh, and I think uh, it's headed for an even higher place because between you, me, and the fence post, let me see, what would be the best thing for Bucky O'Hare? A computer animated movie? What do you think? Uh, I think so. Anyway, oh, here's the, uh, here's the lunchbox. Bucky O'Hare lunchbox. Isn't that cool? Anyway, Bucky O'Hare stuff. Cool. Uh, first cover. Fantastic. Really love it. What do we have over here? Oh, another page from Batman Odyssey. My goodness. And here's the uh, DC uh, version of Man Bat. This is based on the animated version, not on the comic book version. You can see the difference. If you swivel the camera right over there, that's our Remington. We bought it in an auction house. I can't believe we were so lucky to get that Remington statue. It's not necessarily the pride of the studio, but it's pretty nifty. Now, if Sari will turn to the turn, spin around behind her. You'll see another, oh, look at that. that's the uh, black and white <coughs> Batman and uh, Man Bats uh, that DC Comics produced. Up on the wall, you'll see that another cover another piece of the first piece, and that is for uh, an un as yet unpublished You might have to come closer. Yeah, I know, I'm not hearing me. Yet. It's an unpublished Superman thing. I haven't even shown it to DC yet, but it's like a takeoff of the first one where he breaks the chains. I kind of like that. I think that ought to be uh, a good cover, and I suspect that DC will use it. That, what did we say he was? What was his name? Uh, Cal... Calabac. Calabac. Anyway, so when you guys come up here and you go on the tour, uh, I can't guarantee that all these will be here, but they will definitely, these will, uh, enough of these will be here to remind you, but uh, we do change some now and then. Uh, the ones that were available to, to purchase, like that, uh, you can purchase uh, during our auction or anytime you like. Uh, part of what we're doing uh, today, and I'm saying today is Friday, but of course today is Thursday, we're recording this, is we're making a sale of this stuff to make it available to you. If any inquiries, you just write to neilitems.com and uh, you can find out about it. If you want to come to the auction, you should just come ahead. And I'm going to turn this back over to Neil, who's sitting in the conference room. 
well, maybe not, uh, at the auction. See you guys.